I, I had an IT company, you know, what was really never leaving. You know, I, I, I thought they had the best model. And when I found eXp, that was one of my curiosities. Uh, go ahead and just get started by kind of sharing your kind of sharing your your real estate journey and uh, your your story. Okay, well, it started back uh, right after 9/11. I, I had an IT company that I, I lost, and real estate was kind of a second career for me. So I got licensed, and real estate was always a passion for me because my dad was an architect, and I kind of grew up on job sites. So I love the creative mm -hmm. process of. You know, home building and commercial office building and all that. So I always had a, a passion for it. But uh, so I got licensed around uh, 2002. So I've been in the business 21 years, um, cut my teeth at an ERA franchise. And a friend said, hey, you know, come over here and work with me. It's a great company. I said, OK, you know, I didn't check anybody else, didn't know any better at the time and ended up being there about seven years. And, um, you know, I looked in the rearview mirror one day and said, holy cow, my broker's getting like seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year off of me. That's probably way too much based on some other things I'm seeing. So I, I sought out, actually got recruited by a REMAX broker. So I went to REMAX from there, um, spent a year there. We had some philosophical differences. So I, I only stayed there a year and I liked the REMAX model. So I bought my own franchise and and ultimately grew it to the third largest Remax in the Louisville, Kentucky market. And there were 13 Remax offices in Louisville wow. at the time. So I was proud of that. And, um, you know, what was really never leaving, you know, I, I, I thought they had the best model and, you know, as many people do, you know, I was, I was loyal to myself. I was the broker owner and <laughs> I didn't do a ton of recruiting, but still grew a, a nice, uh, brokerage just because of, you know, the rep the reputation that, that we made for ourselves in the market. So, right. um, and then, uh, life happened. And, and if there's anything I get across today, I, I want our viewers to understand that, you know, stop saying that'll never happen to me. Uh, and I think all of us are guilty of that. I certainly felt that way. Um, I, I know you and I share a Christian belief and, and I, I felt I was right with my maker and I knew where I was going to end up. But at um, 49 years old, I found myself laying in a hospital bed facing a quadruple bypass heart surgery two days later because they wouldn't let me leave for two days. So I spent a, the, the next day getting my house in order because I thought I was going to die. And, wow. you know, a lot of people are probably saying, well, heart surgery, you know, that's no big deal. You know, do thousands of those a year right now. But my situation is I had no heart disease in my family. I had no high cholesterol. I had no high blood pressure. I never was a smoker. I worked out five days a week at the YMCA. I was the epitome of health and fitness. And there was no reason I should have been in that situation. So I thought the good Lord was calling me home and had another plan for me. And, you know, thankfully, uh, I made it through that, obviously, but I, um, I can remember thinking I haven't accomplished what I had set out to accomplish in this world. And, and I knew I didn't even I couldn't even identify what that was at that time. I just knew there was something missing, something more I wanted to do. I knew it had something to do with giving back. I had no idea uh, how I was going to do that. But that obviously was a life changing moment. You know, I was in the middle of owning my Remax franchise. Um, thank God I had a team because that passive income or that residual income off of the team kept me financially afloat, you know, because most agents, if they left the business for seven weeks, which is how long I was out of it for my recovery, um, they're out of business in, in right. seven weeks. I handed my cell phone to my wife. I said, don't call me unless somebody's dying or bleeding. And she never called. So she kind of ran the office and I stayed at home and recovered for three weeks. And then I went to the beach for three weeks and recovered in the sunshine and just kind of got, got myself back together and came back to work in week eight and, you know, was right back in the saddle again. So, um, and, and I say that because, you know, bad things happen to good people and, you know, it, it might be health. 
of yourself. It might be health of a loved one. It might be, you know, a spouse, a child. You, you just never know. It might be a, a parent that you all of a sudden have to take care of. I, I've got a good friend that has that situation and she's having to move from Alabama to Georgia to take care of her mother. Right. She might even be watching right now, but you know, things happen. So when I found EXP, that was one of my curiosities. But before we go there, I'll, I'll finish the story. My cardiologist said, Tim, you were 80% blocked in all four arteries. And there's no physical reason why you must just be too freaking stressed. You literally would have died in your recliner had you not have noticed the tightness in your chest. Bro. And um, I figured that out in the gym. You know, I never had a heart attack, thankfully. So I had no heart damage, but I, I was tight up high between my shoulders. I'm on the elliptical and I thought I was stretching through it because five minutes in it would start I'm like, gosh, that's a little tight feeling. And and then five minutes later, it would be gone. I'm like, OK, well, I stretched out, you know, those shoulder right. muscles, chest muscles, everything ties together. And, and I didn't think anything of it. But, you know, so that went on and that's what told me, hey, you better mention this to your to your doctor at your annual physical this year. So picking back up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad, obviously, I, I figured that out because I wouldn't be here today to tell about it. But um, so when she said, you must just be too stressed, I said, well, gosh, you know, I love my job. I love what I do. I love mentoring agents and pouring into them and teaching them. You know, my knowledge at the time was, you know, 10, 15 years. And um, so I said, well, there must be a lot of stress I'm not aware of. So make a very long story short. The following January, this happened on September 11th, actually, I share that with, you know, the 9-11 anniversary. That was the day of my heart surgery. Well, the following January, we were in church and the sermon series was entitled Simplify. And I'm like, OK, God spoke to me once back in September. <laughs> He's telling me again, simplify your life, Tim. And very long story short, decided almost that day to sell the brokerage, not right. because it was stressful, but figure, you know, if I can sell it and get debt free as a result, um, that'll simplify life a lot, having not any, you know, permanent long-term obligations. And so that's what I did. I, I went to a Remax uh, broker in town, in, in my town, in Louisville, that I thought needed my agent count and the volume of sales they were doing and, and cut a deal with them. Signed a three-year contract not to compete and um they asked me to stay on and run the company for them i said okay because obviously they knew my relationship was with the agents that i had and you know if they'd right. have stepped in and became the broker then they may have had some retention issues and and so forth so i said yeah that's fine i mean i, I wasn't stressed about that i love that part of my job like i said so i stayed for three years and at about month 34 of the 36 years we were we the 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 purchaser of my company and myself and a couple of the leaders on the management team were evaluating what do we do because their franchise agreement was coming up the one they bought from me was coming up so we were looking at every model out there and in so doing actually we didn't even look at exp specifically that way but somebody called me that used to be an agent of mine and said tim i want you to look at exp realty uh, I'm thinking of moving my license there and I want to make sure I'm, I'm not making a huge mistake. Would you mind evaluating the model for me? And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I said, if you're really trying to recruit me, though, I'm, I'm not coming. I'm happy where I am. I love what I do. And I, I won't go into that story right now. But um, anyway, I looked at the model and was like, holy crap. And I'm a very detail oriented person. So I studied the model inside out and backwards for about 60 days. And at the end of my three-year no-compete, I took my sales team, the Hollanden team in, in Louisville, Kentucky, and we all moved to EXP. And um, they're with me to this day. And, you know, we generate 160 to 180 transactions a year on a, on a good year. It's not been quite that the last couple because of inventory problems. And certainly sure. now we have a, an interest rate problem, among other things. But, um, you know, life has been forever changed. Um, I'll stop there and see if you have any questions because I could just go – for yeah. how long you plan on me being here. <laughs> well, that's great. I really appreciate the, the backstory. I think there's a, probably a lot of, you know, independent broker owners or team leaders that really can kind of connect with you. Um, I, that's interesting how you, you know, you didn't feel stressed, but there was still a lot of stress in your body to, to create that, right? Um, yeah. And I think a lot of us probably are in that, you know, same boat. Um, 
But yeah, I, my, my biggest question, you said when you are evaluating the, the model for your, for one of your, your agents, um, and then you said, you know, holy crap, what were the, what were the top things that, that really made you say that? Um, well, first it looked too good to be true. And anytime there's such goodness in anything, you create this disbelief that there must be something wrong. And so I was looking behind every corner, trying to find the problem. And, and like I said, I did due diligence for 60 days. I, I probably talked to, I don't know, 50 EXP agents, um, about their experiences. And, you know, as a company, I think we had 6,800 agents when I joined. Okay. So 50 was a big percentage of those. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it had what I needed and, and it kind of ties the whole heart story together. Cause I didn't want to be 80 years old, still unlocking doors for buyers. Right. That was the bottom line. I wanted, I had a little residual income coming off my team, um, but I wanted something more than that. Cause I don't know about you, Andre, but I've never been to a realtor retirement party, really? but I've been to far too many funerals. Right. You know, good friend of ours, Rick Jiha just passed a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. God rest his soul. And you know, I, I pray for Casey, his wife and his family every day. Uh, and thank God he was at EXP because his family will forever, I'm, and I'm talking generational wealth, will forever be okay. And we can get into some of that if you'd like to. But I just, um, I came to EXP because I didn't want to sell, sell real estate for the rest of my life. And EXP had two major components that I was highly interested in, and, and that was residual income. And the fact that we all own the company, uh, they've got a phenomenal stock plan. So I came to EXP to build a stock portfolio of wealth through that and to build a minuscule amount of residual income. I told my wife when I come to EXP, here's how we're going to value success. I said, five years from now, I want to be making 50,000 a year in residual income. And if we're doing that, then this would have been a successful move. That was my yardstick. Mm -hmm. And Andre, I did that in 15 months. I couldn't believe it. Wow. And, and I did it without trying. I, I'm not a recruiter. I told you I never recruited agents to my Remax office. It, it's never been in my DNA, if you will. But agents started calling me and said, Tim, why, why did you go to EXP? Are you crazy? You know, what are you thinking? I'm like, well, I don't think so, but here, let me show it to you and you tell me. And, and so that's how my organization started to grow. And, um, Today, I've got around 275 in my organization, and they are spread across about 22 states and three or four countries, and and it doesn't appear like there's no stopping it. I mean, it, it's it's just, it's life-changing. Um, I went to my sales team uh, 18 months in and said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm not going to sell real estate anymore for the fourth quarter of 2019. Remember, I came in April 2018. so. October, 2019, I said, I'm going to take the fourth quarter off. I'm not going to sell any real estate. I'm going to refer all that to you all. Of course, they were tickled to death with that. Right. And I'm going to actually proactively go out and attract agents um, to see how I do. And Andrea never went back. The only sales I do to this day are referrals and past clients and family or friends. My team handles everything else. Well, that's fantastic. Isn't that kind of the dream of most independent broker owners is to build a team, build a business so uh, you can really focus on the things that you love, maybe sell a house here or there to your brother, to your you know family member, but to, to support your team, um, but make enough income for yourself so you can do the things that you love doing um, and mm -hmm. help your, you know, help your organization at the same time. Um, now, what, what's what do you see the big difference is of you owning your you know you had a team with with your independent with remax and having your you know your team with within exp what are the biggest differences there that had allowed you to uh you know be able to step off that transactional treadmill of selling every day well i i guess first of all on the on the sales side I've always been big on systems and processes and training and, and amazing technology tools. And, and I always provided all that for my team. 
it was difficult and actually impossible to do that for every agent in the brokerage, which is one of the broker's pain points that we can talk about if, if you'd like. But, you know, I was comfortable that my team could handle everything we were doing because they already did it when I was gone for seven weeks. I had experienced mm -hmm. that and, and I knew that I could step away and not be in the business anymore, but just oversee it. So uh, that's what I did. And after that fourth quarter, you know, Q1 of 2020, if you remember, is when COVID came into the world. And my wife and I self-quarantined at our lake house for seven weeks, scared to death of COVID because of my heart issues in the past. And um, so we were pretty diligent about that. We just put our head down and, and got to attracting. And I think I attracted 19 agents that year. Um, and I guess the biggest difference between you know, a traditional sales team and, you know, an expansion team or, you know, a, an organization at EXP, if you will, is, you know, teams can be revolving doors. Team leaders grow up, they fly their wings, they leave the nest and they go do it on their own. Now, now I've been blessed. My team's not done that for the most part. I mean, my average team member has been with me for seven years, which I'm thrilled of. But but that's because I run my team a little differently than most teams do too. Um, that's a whole separate podcast. <laughs> but um, the as a builder at EXP in my EXP organization, I'm able to, to pour into a much larger team. And, and just two minutes on that, myself and, and four other um, EXP leaders we're not necessarily even in each other's organization. It's just, we partnered together and created what we call the EXP freedom team. And in that organization, we have 3000 agents at EXP and we pour into them. In addition to the 80 hours of training that EXP offers every agent every week, right? Um, we've got, we teach them how to attract. If that's something they're interested in, we teach, we have a mastermind every Tuesday. We have a leadership call every every Friday and so forth. So three, four, five times a week, we're getting together as a group. You know, not everybody plugs into that, but but those that do get a lot out of that. So we're just constantly helping agents sell more real estate, teaching them how to work through difficult markets. Because I went through 07, 08, 09, as you did. And um, it's about putting your head down, doubling down and staying top of mind with, with your entire database primarily in, in addition to I also double down on all my marketing because I spend twice what I do in a bad market than I do in a good right. market because I'm offsetting all the agents that aren't marketing right. and I'm very relevant when we come out and the pendulum ultimately swings the other way. So, in fact, I made a million dollars a year at Remax personally um, by doing just that and grew every year during the, the 07, 08, 09 recession. But and you got to do different things. Right. In, in that case, it was short sales and bank foreclosures. I did a lot of REOs for a major regional bank. So um, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's great. Um, you mentioned pain points. What, what were some of your pain points that you had as an independent broker owner of your franchise compared to uh, running your team at EXP? Well, as a broker owner, it was really lonely. I had nobody to turn to for advice and counsel other than, you know, I, I could pay a coach. Yeah, I, I coached with several people, um, spent a ton of money doing that. But they're, the Remax brokers in my market didn't really want to talk strategy because, you know, that was I was their competition and I was growing faster than they were on a, on a percentage increase every year basis. So, you know, it's like training in the office. The training was done by the smartest agent in the physical local office. So we got no national or global knowledge and we certainly didn't get all the training that person could have given us because that trainer knew they were training their competition. So, you know, one pain point was just, it was lonely. You know, I had to figure everything out by yourself. Uh, at EXP, that's not the case. You know, we have 89,000 some agents today and, and we're all pouring into each other because we all own the company together. And, you know, I know you're the same like me. I, I would help any agent in EXP anywhere, whether they're in my organization or not, because if I can help them win, the company wins. And when the companies win and all the agent owners win by default. So right. that's kind of our our collaboration culture at EXP. And I never experienced that anywhere uh, that I worked previously, including my own brokerage. 
because the person doing the training for me wasn't giving my agents all they had <laughs> for right. the same reason. So another pain point is profitability. You know, quite frankly, most brokerages aren't profitable unless they have scale, you know, hundreds of agents, certainly the mom and pops, you know, the, the 30, 40, 50 agent brokerages are smaller. They're not making money unless the broker owner has a team or is a big producer him or herself. And, and that's really what's paying the bills. I would encourage all of our broker owner listeners or viewers to pull your profit, pull your GCI out of your P and L and see if you still have a profitable model. And I would wager you don't, uh, that was with me. And that's with, I spent a lot of time bringing brokerages to EXP now. And, um, that's what I see almost in every single case, unless they've got several hundred and they're just making it up on volume, as we say. All right. So it's lonely. It's, it's not profitable technological advancements. You know, I used to be in the IT business. I told you for 20 years prior to real estate and technology gets faster and, and twice as expensive or excuse me, half as expensive every 12 months. And so you're constantly changing agents want the best next shiny penny. They always want more. They always want a better website, better leads. You know, you, you know, the game. Right. So that's a struggle for a broker owner that doesn't have the profitability to be able to afford to do that. You know, they want systems to do online document management and, and electronic signature systems and CRMs and lead generating systems. And it's just hard. It's downright hard. <laughs> and, and expensive, right? And, Very. and all those systems you just mentioned, we get it at EXP for what, $85 a month. I mean, those, yeah. That, that brings a question. Did you ever put, um, you know, a number on how much money you were, you were saving, um, by partnering up with EXP at, compared to a broker? You know, I haven't, I, I built a lot of spreadsheets looking at, okay, well, what's, you know, cause at Remax I had a 95, five split. I mean, what's better than that? Right. I mean, right. there's hundred percent split with a big transaction fee. I guess that would be better by some people's standards, but you know, I've, I built spreadsheets to say, oh yeah, actually an 80, 20 split with a $16,000 cap is better and it gets better at this sales dollar. So I ran that for all of my team members and myself based on the volume we'd done the prior year. And I, I saw the, the profitability point and, and it was profitable, you know, inside of about six months because of our capping system, but yeah, very expensive. Um, and, and something else, um, I got pulled into a couple of different they weren't lawsuits, but they were ethics uh, hearings and we were not guilty in either of the ones, but man, the distraction and the expense for legal representation. And, you know, it, it's, it's sad that somebody can come after you and you can be victorious, but you spent tens of thousand dollars on attorney fees and, and you can't even count the distraction cost that that is. And you win but you still lost, you know, you, yeah. you follow what I'm saying there. Uh, so my, as a broker owner, and I wasn't the owner when I moved to eXp, but I was still the broker. So I still had all the legal liability. In fact, I'm interviewing an agent, uh, on my podcast next week who got sued because one of his agents slept with one of his agents clients. And I don't know what the damages were, but it costs several hundred thousand dollars to defend himself. And, you know, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And that's probably the biggest stress reliever is, you know, the sleepless nights when you know your agent screwed up and you, you hope nobody finds out about it and you help them to correct it. Or maybe you terminated them because they were that much of a liability to the company. I've had to do that a few times in my past, but um, no more sleepless nights. Yeah, that's a big uh, stress reliever for for sure. And uh, explain real quick, um, even though you know you're an associate broker at EXP and running your team, how how you're not responsible um, and you can sleep well at night because of of the platform. If someone were to see you, yeah. Well, in essence, as a broker, if I brought my organization to EXP, I pay eighty five dollars a month, just like my agents do. So if you think about it for my 85 dollars 
I don't have to have the secretary at the front door anymore. I don't have to have the compliance person. I don't have to have the bookkeeper that's cutting all the commissions and managing all the earnest money accounts. I don't have any personal liability as the, the designated or the qualifying broker or whatever the term is, depending on our viewers states, every state's a little bit different. I'm in right. three, I'm licensed in three states and the, and it's a different term in all three. Um, but my point is I don't have that legal liability anymore because EXP hires brokers and I say brokers plural in every state because we have multiple brokers depending on the number of agents in each state and the number of transactions that those agents are doing. So they're the ones, they're the employees of, of EXP, the legal entity, um, and they're the ones with that liability, not me. So in essence, I'm running my own brokerage like I always did. It's the Holland and team. You know, I was the Holland and team at Remax Champions was the name of the brokerage that I sold and it's still there today. Um, but now I'm the Holland and team, you know, brokered by eXp Realty without any of the liability, without any of the overhead cost. I pay $85 and all those things are done for me. And I stay up to date with all the latest technologically advanced systems, uh, 80 hours of training every week. I could never have given them 80 hours of training in a month, right? Get alone in a week. So, and, and that training is, hundred percent, you know, over the top, you know, nobody's holding back because they're fearing training their competition in their local office. Speaking of the local office, when I came to EXP, I bought an office condo because my team was used to working out of an office, but ended up selling it a couple of years ago because they stopped coming to the office. They realized, you know, we really don't need this. And COVID contributed to that a little bit, right. obviously, but even pre COVID, some of my agents weren't coming in at all, unless they were dropping off paperwork and all that at exp is electronic so they really weren't dropping off paperwork we were still using physical files for for our own uh in, internal files but you know all that was online and finally i guess it was 1 1 20 i said you know this is stupid let's just scan everything and put it in sky slope and get rid of these paper files and i kept them for five years from my old life because i was required to by the real estate commission and then we had a burn a big big bonfire every year when another year passed by so those are all gone now <laughs> <laughs> cool so tell me because i know it's a big misconception out there not having you know a physical office for your team to to work from um how can you have the collaboration like you do when you had everyone come into the office mm, great question well several things um we do have an office. It's a cloud office, so we can still meet in the cloud. We can still converse just like you and I are right now. So there's right. there's that option. Um, we have access to Regis and Spaces. Both are branded companies that are kind of um, uh, I'm losing the term right now. Places you can go and work temporarily. So we meet there quite regularly. I go into Regis, you know, once or twice a month doesn't cost me anything uh, right. because every EXP agent has a, a, a membership to Regis and Spaces. And I think there's 4,000 locations right. worldwide that you can walk into and, and use for free at any time. And, you know, you can meet a client there if you want. I, I haven't done that because one, I'm not selling a whole lot anymore. And, but when I was, I was meeting my client at their house or at the first right. house I was showing them or whatever the case was, or we'd meet at a Starbucks and so forth. So it's just never been a problem. Um, and that's why I don't have an office today is it, it was unnecessary. It was an expense I didn't need to have, but I thought I needed to have it just because of the change. It, it kind of paved the road for, for my team that was used to having an office, but clearly they, they operate fine without it today. And how do you find the collaboration between you and your, and your agents? Um, is it, has it changed? Is it, is it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? What's the difference? Uh, now? It, it's, it's definitely better just because, you know, we were never all together at the same time at the office anyway. So now our, our meetings are purposeful. Uh, we're all together at the same time. We're, we're in EXP world, our cloud office, or we might be on a zoom call or we might, um, uh, for, for my sales team standpoint, you know, we will still get together periodically, physically, you know, at a restaurant right. or coffee shop or at a Regis location. And the collaboration is, is phenomenal. I, I mentioned, you know, my freedom team organization of 3000 agency, and we're certainly collaborating at a much higher level than the seven people on the Holland and team were ever able to do. Right. 
Right. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I found the, I found the same thing that I was able to because we're on we we have a lot of lot in in person meetings. The the company you can go to an event just about every month if you wanted to a, a live event. Um, oh yeah. But because of the ownership and every agent now having ownership in the company, they show up different. In the past, mm -hmm. even if they were on your team, they're still just working for that commission check and, and there's really nothing else besides that commission check. Uh, and now they're showing up because they have ownership in the company they're helping to grow. And they it's a total different uh, attitude that agents have. Do you find that to be true? Absolutely. That's like what I was saying, you know, the, the local training, you know, it's limited to local knowledge, first of all. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it used to be. And that's the agent that wouldn't give the agents in the training class 100% of their knowledge because they knew they were training their next competitor in their local market. And we don't have any of that at eXp. You know, there's 89,000 people in the company in, in 24 countries. And somebody might know way more than me in California that I haven't seen yet in Kentucky or Indiana or Alabama. And, you know, I'm learning from the best of the best. You know, in fact, our icon agents are the best of the best. And many of the icon agents are the ones doing that, that training. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Where do you see yourself uh, in, in five years, Tim? Where does, uh, what's your, your vision for your business in the next five years? I want to keep pouring into the individual agents in the freedom team, helping them sell more houses, utilizing the 21 years of experience I had to do that and helping them through the market changes that I've been through personally. Um, my passion though, right now is working with agents, um, showing them that there is another way to get paid multiple ways for doing the exact same thing that they're doing in their current brokerage. And I'm spending a lot of time talking to the independent broker owner and to the franchise broker owner. Now, I don't I don't step into that relationship unless they're nearing the end of their franchise agreement, of course, because right. I don't want to interfere with that. But I love bringing brokerages over to eXp because something could happen to them like happened to me. And they're not even thinking about that yet. They're thinking about, oh, my gosh, what do I do? I'm losing my butt because my expenses are the same and my revenue is way down right now. 40% is the number I hear talking to most brokers and all across the country and even in other countries. Um, so, you know, my passion is, is really just helping them hold their hand in a transition that gives them financial freedom, time freedom and location freedom, which is what I feel I have, you know, no bragging whatsoever, but just to make the point, you know, I could walk away from this job today and never do another thing the rest of my life and be financially okay. And I can do that where I want to do it with who I want to do it on my time frame. And I don't say that to brag at all, but I love giving that to other broker owners that haven't seen that life. You know, broker owners, we have huge egos. My name's on the door. I built this baby. I, I had all those same thoughts, but you know, they don't have to lose that. They can be ABC Realty brokered by EXP or the ABC team brokered by EXP Realty. You know, state law uh, right. make that vary it's state to state on what you can do from an ad regulatory standpoint. But um, that's my passion. That's my feel good. That's why I do what I do because I, I love showing somebody that, you know, you don't have to show houses till you're 80 years old. You know, broker owner, you can eliminate all the stress, all the expense except $85 a month, bring your entire brokerage to eXp. And eXp now has incentives to bring those brokerages over. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. You know, eXp in five and a half years has never taken anything away from me that I had five and a half years ago, mm. but they've added and added and added more and more and more benefits along the way, you know, like health insurance for one. We didn't have health insurance right. five and a half years ago. Now we do. That's just one example. But um, I know other brokerages... In fact, um, I saw anywhere published their quarterly earnings report last week or the week before, and they were stating in that earnings report that they were, they were taking a bigger split of commission. They were telling their investors that, well, the inverse of that is they were taking split away from their agents. And, okay. and I'm seeing that, you know, brokers 
they they have to they've got to cut splits down or increase expenses to stay alive i see we're gonna i think we're gonna see a lot of consolidation in our industry uh for that reason because there are scenarios where people can combine organizations and and get rid of duplicate expenses and actually create a profitable entity from two unprofitable entities so i'm just loving going through that because of my detail oriented I, I love those financial analysis and those spreadsheets and just plugging in numbers and and helping people figure out if it might make sense or not for them to be a part of EXP Realty. Yeah, and the ones that it is a good fit, I mean, it's a huge blessing. I mean, you're really giving them a huge blessing just like uh just like you have now, so that's uh that's a Absolutely. big deal. Another example, you know, most brokers don't have any sort of incentive if if one of their agents recruits another agent to their brokerage. They can't afford to. I I did a little bit. I think it was 500 bucks or something out of the first closing or something, but you know, nothing long term like EXP has. So if, if you think about it, you have a 20 person brokerage and all 20 of those agents come with the broker to EXP under that partnership. Now they have an incentive and the broker is going to find that those 20 people uh four or five of them they're going to go out and recruit maybe 20 more people so now they're getting paid on 40 instead of 20 and then right. those 40 may go out and recruit five or 10 people and then this thing just starts exponentially growing that that's what shocked me i told you my goal was 50,000 in five years i made 50,000 in 15 months it just blew me away when i started seeing residually seven eight nine thousand a month coming in I'm like holy crap and i'm not even trying You know, those were agents that respected me that said, "Hey, tell me about EXP. Why'd you make the move?" Okay, we'll sit down. So, what been life changing. Uh, what would you say to to a broker owner that, you know, they're like you said, they they got a big ego. This is their baby. Um, they're uh, not looking to make any change. They may be hurting, but they would have never tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. what do you what do you say to to independent broker Uh, to have them at least just take a look. I would say give me a call, give Andre a call and just have a confidential conversation. We know you're hurting. I've been there, done that. Um felt the pain that you're feeling. Seven open conversation. I, I don't know, I I do know cuz cuz I know you fairly well indirectly. You know, nobody's going to put a hard sell on anybody. Nobody's going to put any pressure on anybody to do anything. I'm just going to have a conversation and do the math and see if it makes sense financially or not. I guarantee you it's going to make sense from a legal lim legal liability standpoint and elimination of expense standpoint and so forth. You you just got to figure out if if the ego can uh, make the move. But and I assure you I've not changed one thing. I mean my sign is even basically the same as it was before subject to my state ad regs right. but um i would say just keep an open mind um you don't know what you don't know so i would spend a little bit of time finding out what you don't know and and then you'll be in a position to make an educated uh, decision yeah that's great advice i mean the the most expensive thing anyone can have is a closed mind and uh if they're if they'll just have an open mind and take a look um absolutely could be can be life changing so yeah any any independent brokers or or solo agents you know either one uh in anywhere in, in the 50 states or nine provinces of Canada 24 countries uh Tim's phone number is on there my phone number is on the on the screen give us a call happy to have a independent private conversation to uh go over the numbers and just do the math and yeah. uh, see what uh you know what it could do for you Um, and we can we can both connect you with other broker owners that are of similar size that have already made the move. I mean, what we bring over 450 brokerages last year alone, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. there's plenty of people that have been in your shoes that can tell you what the experience was like and life before and and after um, being the owner of their own shop. And they still own it. You own stock in right. EXP World Holdings Inc. So you haven't really lost ownership. You've actually picked up ownership in something that's actually liquid now because you can sell it on the stock exchange. That's right. It on the Nasdaq, EXPI, check it out. All the real estate companies are down today after everything that happened with NAR and that lawsuit yesterday, but um, it bounces back. Right. It'll always swings both ways. Especially with with the new programs with uh with with Boost and 
and Thrive. Those are a couple of programs that EXP's put together for independent broker owners. Uh, like you said, financially giving them, we're not buying companies, um, but they're, they are given financial incentives uh, to help mm -hmm. make the transition. Um, and if you have a team, a certain size team, they're doing the same and giving stock uh, ownership over and above the, the regular stock that you and I get. So, right. so it, if people just use a, have an open mind and do the math, uh, I think 90 plus percent, it's usually a pretty good fit, especially if they're, you know, they're serious about uh, wanting to grow and uh, bring their business to the next level and then come with a contribution type heart, uh, like all of us at the company, it uh, mm -hmm. is normally a, a pretty good fit. When even if it were a net nil change financially, the fact that you're going to accumulate stock and build residual income additionally to the financial model is where the true game changing really happens. I think, I mean, the financial model, I, I ran the numbers. I've won the icon three out of the five years I've been with the XP. So I've essentially worked for hundred percent split um, right. because the XP gives us $16,000 back our entire cap back in stock. Um, so the financial model certainly makes sense to the top producing agents. And in most markets, you only need, you know, 25, 30 transactions a year to win that some markets a little less, but, um, yeah, keep an open mind, have a conversation and, um, just don't, don't close your mind. Like you said, yeah. that's the most expensive mistake there is. I'm just thankful that somebody reached out to me and asked me to look at it for them because I, I wasn't coming until I saw it. Yeah, once you see it, it's, you can't unsee it, right? My yeah. last two questions for you. If you could do it all over again, Tim, what would you do differently? Well, I didn't tell you this part of the story, but in 2010, EXP was one year old. They knocked on my door and said, Tim, would you consider applying for the broker position in Kentucky? I said, no have no interest you know I, I just shut them down it was a no didn't even want to know what it was about um i wish i'd have listened what that would have been eight years prior wow. we weren't even a publicly traded stock in 2010 and when we went public i think our stock was 16 cents a share on the on the over-the-counter market now we're trading in the teens on the nasdaq um, so I, I wish I would have had an open mind back in 2010 when I first had the opportunity hmm. and I wish I wouldn't have done 60 days worth of due diligence when I did start looking at it seriously. I wish I'd have come even sooner because, you know, the sooner you're here, the, the better it is. There's just no two ways about it. You know, I have agents on my team that have several hundred thousand dollars worth of stock value today. And all they did is they decided to invest 5% of their commission into the stock plan at a 10% discount. That's totally voluntary. They don't have to do this. They chose to do it. And a couple of them have a couple of hundred thousand dollars. My son sold stock and paid cash for his brand new Tesla a couple of years ago. You know, story after story like that, that uh, in and of themselves are life changing. Just yeah, to start right. accumulating a couple of hundred grand on the side. You know, what realtor wouldn't want to do that? Did you ever do the the math on on that of what if you would have looked at this eight <laughs> years ago? Probably no. probably don't want to, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't focus on things I can't any longer yeah. control. <laughs> it's yeah, just gonna go. make me mad. <laughs> That's right. Well, I always, uh, I really appreciate your time today, Tim, and, and uh, being pleasure. part of our Financial Freedom Forever podcast. Definitely you know, reach out to any of us, uh, scan a QR code if you want to get uh, connected. Uh, my, my last question before we close out, Tim, is if you're a, a, a book reader, if you have a favorite book you'd like to recommend to the audience or a movie watcher, your favorite movie you'd like to recommend. Oh, gosh. I, I made a note of one you recommended just a few days ago. Who not now? I've got that on my list, but I haven't read it yet. Um, I, I just finished, um, passive prospecting by Levi Lassick. You know, okay. he's done a phenomenal job building a YouTube channel right? where all of his leads are coming in off his channel for free, not spending a nickel on, on lead gen. Um, I think he did a million two in GCI in his first 15 months, something like that. Um, so yeah, that that's, I'm going to read that. I, I listened to it on audible and I also bought the, the, the paper copy because I want to mark it up now and highlight right. it and, 
and I'm I'm revamping my YouTube channels and and all that too. So that that's that's a one that can change an agent's life right now is is to start doing video and start putting putting videos out. You know, two three a week is all it takes to start getting subscribers and and be real. Uh, show your personality, show your flaws, be genuine, and people are going to connect with that. So that's my tip of the day. It's not what you ask, but oh, that's great. prospecting is the name of the book. All right, fantastic. Well, I appreciate you again, Tim. We'll see you at the next live event. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Financial Freedom Forever podcast, and we'll see you again next week. Yeah, thank you, Andre. I really appreciate you having me on today. All right, Tim, God bless. God bless you. Continued success, my friend. Thank you, you too.